Milana was getting off a plane in Rome four hours later. She wanted nothing more than to return to her Trastevere apartment and sit in her bathtub, preferably with a nice bottle of wine and a box of pistachio nougat. The quick shower she had in Tangier was enough to get the blood off, but she could still smell the stinking cages and the men she had killed on her skin. Bellona was in the taxi the next time the phone rang. She smiled as she answered. Pronto? How did it go, Bells? said asked. Fine. I sent you a little present in the mail. I don't know if there is anything useful on it, but it might have their suppliers and buyers, she replied, staring out the window at the rain-soaked city. Are you okay? You sound a bit off there, Bells. Usually you're more chipper after a murder spree, Set teased. He knew her too well. Bellona bit the inside of her cheek. I have a problem. Spit it out. Someone has taken a hit out on Raphael. Bellona didn't have to tell Set who Raphael was. He had gotten the whole story out of her one night in the Congo. Set was one of her oldest friends, and being another war god was perhaps the only person who understood why she had stayed as far away from Raphael as possible. Set swore in the old tongue before switching back to Italian. What are you going to do? You can't level Rome. Not after last time. I can't sit back and watch him die, either. It will mean exposing yourself to him. It's been over twenty years, Bells. He's going to see you haven't aged. Bellona sighed. I know, but I doubt he will even remember me. I still can't sit back and wait for him to die. And if he has a wife and kids? Because you walked away, so you can't get jealous, Set asked. I'm not jealous. I'm assuming he does have a family, Set. I'm ready for it. I can't let them die either, 